back. Well, at least it is for round 12, I'll tell you that much. G'day, I'm Essendon stalwart Paul Vanderhaar. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm James Clements. I don't look anything like Paul Vanderhaar. Uh, nor have I actually ever played AFL football. But either way, this is the AFL Today Show. We are here to make footy a bit fun. That's what we do. It's the greatest game in the world already, but still, don't have to take it too serious, do you? Anyway, joining me for this Teams Thursday show, just a single weird little ding guy just hanging out there. One full-blown footy nuff. Some would call him an AFL expert. It's the stats guy. Liam McKellen. What's going on, stats boy? There was a lot of words to describe me there. Yeah, I'm very excited. North aren't playing this week, as I mentioned earlier in the week. So, bye week. I'm all for the bye week when North. I don't have to watch my, yeah, team struggle. Your Wednesday glee during <laughs> yesterday's show going, my teams are playing. Hooray! Usually Whisper. I hate it, but yeah, this year I'm like, yeah, we need a break. It's like, wow, how do we improve on 0-10? Yeah. 0-11? Have, have a break. Have cool. a break. Go to Bali. Uh, just have a, have a week off. Yeah. Uh, either way, before we get into the rest of the show where we preview every single game for you this round, we've already done the Thursday night footy power blues one on yesterday's show. We'll go over it very quickly here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we do that, remember to subscribe across all of the YouTube channel gear, all the socials, all that fun stuff, and across all of your podcast apps. Why wouldn't you? I mean, seriously, you're really, really just yanking on the old chain at this point if you're not subscribed. I mean, seriously. Cause footy's back. Let's yes. do some new stats, boy. Let's go. Mid-season draft. I know that you were, you know, all on top of this because your beloved North Melbourne are very, 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 very bad. And you have the number one pick in the mid-season draft. We so, should be uh, mid-season draft es- experts because we've had the one or one to three pick the last like three years in the mid-season draft and we continue to pick the wrong people. Geordie Payne, I think everyone said that he was the best best player. He, he probably probably was the best player. We don't need another midfielder. There's this guy, I was like, oh, halfback. I, I wouldn't mind a halfback. Now he's transformed into a midfielder. I'm like... We don't need a midfielder. North, I don't know. Brady Rawlings has been uh, the list manager for North for a long time. Definitely need a key tall. Someone to help Suva. Someone to help our backman. Yeah, so I was a bit disappointed with that. I feel like this is you just challenging Brady Rawlings to a fight. Well, he is pretty skinny, so it'd be a very, uh, yeah. And you're also very yeah, small. I'm very, yeah, so. <laughs> I could take him. I don't know. He's also is, old. <laughs> this feels like a pretty even match in my books. <laughs> I don't mind it. But I love his reaction. Like everyone else is like losing it. He's like, I'm pick number one. And everyone's like, yeah. And he's sitting there going, oh, God. I don't know if it was shock. Uh, Maybe I'm being a biased He came came out after and said, I was just like, I could not be happy. I'm stoked. But it did look bad. And it looked horrible, dude. Oh, why'd I have to get picked by North? You are a potential number one draftee. Mm. I feel like you should have at least half a brain in your head to understand how you should react. Yeah. There's no dearth of footage of people being drafted just at least in hug the your world. Mom or something. He was just, just like, hey, there. number yeah. one, yeah, <laughs> let's go. I'm awesome. I also love that his name's Geordie Payne, which is what Newcastle fans went through all this year, Stats Boy. That's a great yeah, football reference there on Football Today. We'll have to get you on the show. That's why they call me EPL Jim. <laughs> I wasn't Sometimes. expecting that at all. Come on, Villa. Uh, but I love that reaction. I love that his family was super stoked and he's just like, no, nah, man, I don't want to go to I don't Street. know. Maybe he was trying to be a bit too too cool or something. I don't know. Don't try to be too cool. Yeah. It's very easy. It's yeah. just like, oh, I'm stoked. This is awesome. The best reactions, though, he should have like – the best reaction, I think, the draft ones is like the uh, – To a flip. Russell, Russell Wilson's uh, – Former partner, she just like, oh my god, oh, it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> uh, and the best, best of the best of the best was CD Lamb when he was drafted to the NFL. Yep. His uh, missus, whatever, was sitting next to him, and she's like, grabbed his phone. He's like, no, nope. <laughs> oh, I'll take back my other phone. He's oh. on two phones. He's, I'm he's like, burner. Yeah. he's burner. Yeah, she grabbed the burner. <laughs> Don't be grabbing the burner. That's, that's anyway, uh, the best name in the draft was Kelsey Ripstra. I saw that for the dogs. Uh, BT will be absolutely loving that in the commentary. I just thought thought of you as well, Tim. You, you love a good name. I love a great name. Ripstra. Sh- a- Shadow Brain yeah. just got a new Not challenger. as good as Shadow Brain. Or, Shadow uh, Brain is still the greatest. Who's the other one? Steely Green. That's Steely a nice one. Green. Yeah. Love that. Uh, Kelly Ripster. It's basically <laughs> Kelly Ripper, right? The uh, US TV <laughs> talk show host. That's fantastic. Oh, what a reference. That is. Uh, and also, my favorite one, though, was uh, the bloke who got drafted to the Pies, Illyro Schmidt. Yep. Or as he's better known as, Big Roo. Well, by himself. Love this. <laughs> I love having tickets enough on yourself to go, yeah, I've got my own website. Why wouldn't you? He made his own website. It actually was actually pretty interesting. He was a, a former uh, BMX rider. Then he is a music artist, so he had his link to all his songs on there. Love that. <laughs> Who's not a music artist, though? Yeah, yeah, true. I'm the songbird of our generation. So. <laughs> Whoa, how do we eat Babylon? You've and released more songs on our podcast than actual artists, I'd, I'd say. That's probably not too far from the truth, actually. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's a lot of, and to be honest, on NBA Australia. What an album, man. My catalog is pretty deep. Uh, you should, to be honest, there is an NBA Australia Christmas album that absolutely smashes that what? I completely came up with. It was awesome. I've heard that one before. Uh, the first Squid was born that night. Was uh, yeah, the day after that was released. It was like Christmas Eve. I'm frantically uploading it, <laughs> and like old mates going into labour. Yeah, it was awesome. And you were doing a Christmas album. You were doing a Christmas album. <laughs> <laughs> Good times, that great is, memories. That is Get it at brashes and CC records and tapes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the other big news popping off the last couple of days is Hothead oh. Clarko. Jeez. Will you ever learn? Get what a brain in your head, you idiot. Oh. Alistair Clarkfold over there, in trouble again. He's out there abusing umpires mm. or it basically seems like it was or the match staff officials. Or something, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, so essentially... If he is found guilty of conduct unbecoming, and I think if you're screaming at umpires... Maybe don't do that, yeah. That might be conduct unbecoming of yeah. a coach. Just He's already shame. in a suspension. So and that's yeah. the point. That's it would trigger the two-match suspended sanction that he was mm. given in the preseason against St Kilda when he uh, let rip into, like, Higgins and stuff on St Kilda, wasn't it? Who was it? Uh, it was... Uh, oh, what's his name? The guy who knocked out smashed. Simkin. Yeah, um, that's right. Oh, it wasn't Higgins, name. was it, anyway? No, but uh, he was having a go at a few Saints players as well. Yeah. Which was... I don't know, just the latest example of Alistair Clarkson going off his rocker at people mm. and doing very dumb stuff and using what was referred to as vile language, which also brings up my favourite point, <laughs> that Tom Morris reporting on folks using vile language. That's a fun <laughs> game. Tom Morris doesn't have a good record What's with that What's this over stuff? here? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a glass house? What's that over there? <laughs> it's a stone! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> good job, Tom That Morris. is a good, good point. Good journalism. Yes. That's J. That's big J journalism, that one. Big J. J E R N. Uh, ism. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> but either way, look, they will investigate this. And we saw on Fox Footy that it's like tonight. Well, what was it? Alistair Clarkson is tonight under investigation by yeah, the Yeah, you get your English right. But it's a fascinating setup because Clarko, obviously, the ruse are on the bye this week. We have four teams on the bye. We'll get to that in one second. I thought we were going to be out of the news. And now Clarko and us. Clarko this. just can't back stop in the news. it. It's like. We need just a circuit breaker to get the ruse out of the spotlight. No, You're not playing this week. Everyone forget that your team sucks, stats boy. I, we haven't been in Clarko. the news for anything positive for a while. I was hoping Suva would kick 150 goals. I know. Yeah, that would have <laughs> been, anyway. been nice. That would have been nice. And the other last little bit of news was Fev. Mm. Stats boy, take it away. Oh, There's just been a lot of articles. I was like, oh, a few people are saying Dusty might be done after game 300. Every article, the only quote in the article was Fev saying it on his radio show. Since when is Fev the voice of reason and everyone's going, well, if Fev said it, he was a great, great, uh, great of the game. He kicked a lot of goals. Yes, he might have talked to Dusty once, but I don't trust him saying he's going to be retired after Game 300. There's other journalists saying that he might retire after Game 300. I don't think that's going to happen. He seems like he's still loving uh, playing for him as he showed on the weekend. So, yeah, I don't know about that. Two games away from 300, Dusty is. I do love this because, like, when you say sources say Dust is thinking yeah. about retiring, it's like the source is Fev. Fev yeah, yeah, yeah. Other people have said it. <laughs> the but, source yeah. is when he said it on the radio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because he was just like, you know what? I reckon he'd retire after 300. Yeah. That's like, a pretty good idea. And he's like, tap, 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 tap. Oh, <laughs> Dusty might retire yeah. after 300. He's like, all right. If he does it now, that's going to be awesome. And Fev's going to look like the world's greatest Nostradamus. <laughs> Nostra Fevsis? Nostra, yeah. yeah. Fevstradamus? That's Fevstradamus, better. that's it. Anyway, let's do some game previews. Why not? Game previews. Thursday night footy <laughs> is on in a couple of hours. Port Adelaide, still six and a half point favorites against my beloved Carlton Blues. Uh, the teams came out last night. No changes for the Blues lineup that beat the Gold Coast Suns last week at Marvel. This is, of course, out there in Adelaide Oval. But for the Port Adelaide power, Charlie Dixon, back after being managed. Soldo <laughs> comes in for Jordan Sweet. Francisco Evans, love that. C. Rose e goes back out. And Willie Rioli. Is out yeah, as well for that injury. Out. It's a big yeah. tough one. Uh, I think mm, the over-under was what, 155 and a half for this game. Yes. And it feels fine, I think, just because, look, I talked up how Carlton can probably put up enough of a score that Port Adelaide get over. Hmm. Uh, but it does sort of scream like, yeah, 87 to 86. And that would get you over your 155. Both defenses are, yeah, pretty strong. You got, look, or you got Savaradigli. There's a big port defense that will actually match up okay against Carlton. And then you've got uh, some forward outs for port, which will help Carlton as well. So it probably should go under the over under. I'm interested in this one. It's going to be a fascinating game. I'm still taking the power by eight. I haven't changed from yesterday. Not your, uh, you haven't got your Carlton cap on? Well, we do have like the Carlton scarf in here that we didn't throw on the table. Oh, yeah, anyway. that's all right. All the footy. footy. What oh, are we what are we doing? <laughs> we forgot about Dropping the, footy. the ball. Either way, literally. Uh, but Port by eight was the pick yesterday just because the simple fact, I think, at home mm. at Adelaide Oval where Carlton have only ever beaten Frio, 
Yeah, they're literally one and seven there all time. Never beaten an Adelaide team. Never beaten so. an Adelaide team. Yeah. So, yeah, not great. So I'm still going to go with the Port. I've power. I think they're just like they're sold across all sort of lines. Even without yep. Rosie, you've seen the Hornets step up. Blah 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 blah. Uh, we talked about it on yesterday's show. Still Port, that's boy. Yeah, same reasons as you. I think uh, Port as well because Jason Horn Francis literally lifts when his teammates are out. So, yeah, I don't mind that one. I'm going to go Port by, what did I say on here? Port by 13. I'm going to be pretty close. As the footy comes into shot, we love that. that. Got a footy in there now. Uh, yeah, Port by 13. Both go on Port, but I was tossing and turning. So many tips this week are really hard. So, and this is one of them, I reckon. So, with the four teams missing this week being the Swans, GWS, the Roos, and the Lions, it is a like a really interesting setup where it is incredibly... Very, very, very hard right off the bat for all of these tips this week. Yeah. You're like every game is awesome. Should we just get rid of four teams? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. Let's go. Well, to be fair, you take, yeah, you take out North. Take away like, St Kilda, North, yeah. and the Dogs, and we're done there. Yeah. <laughs> every fan of that too. Oh, come on, Jim. Yeah, don't what do that, saying, Jim. Oh, man? I won't come in. Uh, that's all right. We can punt Frio into the sea as well. <laughs> uh, but with those four teams missing, we do get a solid, weirdly interesting Friday night game at Marvel. Yeah. Cue the whinging from the Collingwood fans. <laughs> because the Pies are hosting the Bulldogs and the Bulldogs are favourites. Why, you might ask? Injuries. Injuries, yes. Uh, a lot of injuries. Plenty out. Pendles is the latest out. We talked about it on yesterday's show as well. Yeah. Uh, the over-under for this one with the Dogs two and a half point favourites is 170.5, which feels fair, but I think it's a bit unders for under the roof, right? Like, we've seen the Dogs put a Half decent scores at Marvel this year. I think it's also because Norton is out. So yeah, that is that, a big He's been their best that forward. Is a good call. But Jamara, definitely inc- a little bit inconsistent. He can kick a goal. You got. Uh, he can kick a goal. Yeah, <laughs> or multiple goals. I don't know why I said he can kick a goal. Harms has done pretty well under the roof as well, which has been a bit of a surprise. But yeah, I, I think that's about right, 170. I think it was Chris the Pop- Dogs Hawthorne game was like 91, 98. Mm. Uh, Collingwood don't have any forwards as well, which is probably. 88, 102 against Sydney. Okay. I, yeah, I that's feel well like, over then. Yeah, yeah, I feel like they're probably the ninety six sixty seven against the bomb rays there, mm. uh, ninety one ninety five against Geelong. So I feel like most of their games at Marvel have gone over. So yep. I'm probably going to go over in that one. Yeah, that's um, right. you got some stats for us there, stats? Uh, yeah, why not? Actually, talking about the over under, I forgot I had that in there. Last seven matches between these sides have actually gone under the total oh, come points. Come on, man! I should have said what that. What are you telling st- me now? <laughs> now I look like an idiot more no, than usual. No, you you actually backed up your point with a few, absolute few little stitch stat. up. Absolute <laughs> stitch up. But Tell yeah, the, a lot of these teams, uh, when they match up, go under. And then Pies have actually won four of the last five meetings against the Dogs at Marvel. But they are five and six their last four years there. So four of their last five wins at Marvel were against the Dogs. <laughs> so I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. So yeah. that helps if you are if you are tipping the Pies. Nice one, which I am going to do in a second. But um, this was a question we sort of brought up during the Midweek Madness show. Yeah, I chucked it in The here, big yeah. question for this game is, should the Pies bring some people out of retirement to fill up their team? <laughs> They've got so many outs. It's getting very, very, very thin on the ground for the Pies. I'm sure Paul Lecuria and Dane Swan. Daisy Thomas is actually playing for the D12 like on Friday night. Get me in. Can son, he play both? He also play for the Pies? He, could. Yeah, he might do a hammy. but yeah, yeah. He might struggle to play in two places at once. <laughs> yeah. uh, but either way, I think they're, like Sav Rock is back in Ooh. Collingwood at the moment. Neon Leon, that'd be cool. Oh, get Neon Leon back yeah. there. Let's go. Prime Neon Leon. Uh, but the big question obviously here is like, the Bulldogs, if you like them to win, and I believe you do, yeah. this is like just the latest case of absolute chaos dogs years, right? Like, Where, are they good? Yeah, Are they good? <laughs> we don't know. Like, if they win this game, you're kind of like, are they good? I still don't know. Mm. Like, how, I know. How would it still be we don't know if they've just beaten like a half-decent team in Collingwood, yep. you know, the reigning premiers? That's the quandary that you find yourselves in as a Bulldogs fan this year, right? They're eleventh yep. on the ladder. They're five and six. If they won this game, they'd be six and six after twelve and feeling pretty good about themselves. But they probably shouldn't because you're <laughs> bad. You just I don't quit. think Dogs fans would feel good because they just they never feel good until they're in the finals or they yeah. Well, the Norton injury is like the real sort of kicking the guts. Injury, yeah. But the weird thing for me is like wondering whether or not that sort of opens it up a little bit more for Jamara and just go, yeah, he's the focal point. Mm. He and Sam Darcy, off you go. You don't have to worry about Norton. Oh, it's okay. He's going to lead up the <laughs> he's going to lead up the field a bit more. Who cares? Just kick it True. to Jamara. He'll kick six. Or Sam Darcy might kick a couple. Yeah. Cody Waitman would be really handy to have in this game. I tell mm, you. But either way, well. uh, my pick is still the Pies. I think just Pies by two. Close one. I just am struggling to see. I do feel like if the dogs win it, they win it handily. Mm-hmm. And the Pies just never look like yeah, they're in it. I agree. But yeah. I feel like the Pies <clears> drag <throat> this back into the mud 
and the dogs, when we, we've seen them get into those sort of games and they just end up losing them. So I'm going to go the pies. Ooh, I, I'm going to go. Pies by two. Pies by two. I'm going to go against you. I'm going to go dogs by 20. As you said, I think the dogs can kick away. They can kick a score over 100. I don't think the pies are going to kick more than 70 or 80 in this one just because they don't have enough forwards. Literally, all their fault. I haven't looked at their forwards. Harvey Harrison's going to kick three he, more. He has to kick <laughs> like five for them to kick a decent score or their mids. Dacos might have to kick a few off half back or off the midfield. So. Bulldogs by 20. They were really good against the Swans last week. Very unlucky. They had no bench pretty much in the second half. Very true. They uh, That Vandermeer 50 that shouldn't have been paid, that stopped their momentum. Yep. They could have been Sydney at home. I think this is a great away game for the Dogs being at Marvel. If this was at the MCG, Collingwood, I'd, I'd be tipping them every day of the week. But you would be all over it if it was at the G. But yeah, yeah they're under they're the roof. They're happy that it's at, under the roof, yeah. So I just think dogs. the Pies can just, yeah, drag it down, drag mm. them with them. Yep. Saturday, we've got another bird bowl. Yes, God, a lot I of love bird the, bowls. I love a good bird bowl. Just go bird out bath. there, make a bird bath for yourself. <laughs> uh, the Hawthorne Hawks take on the Radelaide Crows, the Crom. Three and a half point favourites are the Crows, which is a bit of a head scratch considering that Hawthorne, like, have hit a rare vein of form. Mm. Yeah, no, very good. They're in great form. Well, they just smashed Brisbane. Yeah. They should have beaten Port. Yep. They killed St Kilda the couple of weeks prior and they beat the dogs they should be they on should be, a four game they winning streak. they've covered but, the line the last but four, for yeah. 33 seconds against the port adelaide power Ugh. they aren't uh so the flip side to that obviously is that adelaide have looked a lot better but i think what four six and one for the crom mm -hmm. and their last few weeks is smashing west coast at home last week as a get right game after losing to the pies easy, uh, easy one yeah the weird draw against brisbane which will be the world's most forgotten draw because collingwood keep getting into yeah draws. collingwood got two yeah uh, and they smash, like, you take it all the way back to showdown against power. And you're like, so are they any good not at home? Not this year, no. And we don't no. know yet. Like, yeah, we don't know. They <laughs> yeah. nearly beat the Pies, sure, but they didn't. Mm. Uh, they beaten your horrible, horrible team exactly. in Tassie. Exactly, yeah. They did count. beat the Blues in that just <clears throat> weird, stupid game at Marvel, which might be the one oh, thing, yeah, true. like, yeah. earlier this year that I took the squid to that just sucked. But that was also Carlton. That was a great going, game, yeah. Uh, are we any good? And then Carlton just go, oh, we don't know. <laughs> don't, know man. don't know. And Jordan Dawson played out of his skin. Yes. Um, but they do have like this fascinating team. I keep a very close eye on the Crows. I think they're an interesting team this year. Four, six, and one is a weird sort they're of position. They're exactly to be the same in. as last year, which annoys me, the Crows. Losing Rankine is still like the biggest kick in the guts mm. you could ever imagine just because he was being so good this year. Yeah. To the point where he's like, you know, in all Australian mix, we are rolling all Australian teams that we is broke in my yesterday. team. Yeah, yeah. And You've got the likes of Rochelle and Fogg and Tex. Tex has barely, I feel like, really gotten going. Yeah. It's like last year was such a weird blip, and he sort of turned back on the Tex that was before that. But they're still very good. Like, it's like the likes of Lockie Scholl and uh, Saligo and stuff Saligo like especially has been awesome. It, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is a really fascinating game. But for a simple stat, I'm going to probably go the Hawks. Because Ooh. What's going on with Adelaide of the G stats? I am going against my own stat here, but Adelaide have lost their last nine matches at the MCG. Haven't won there since 2017. They've had a couple of really close ones, which everyone remembers against the Pies. They've had about their last three games against the Pies were all just under three points or something. So they've actually played all right there, but they just can't get a win. They can't get over the line. But I'm still leaning towards them, I think. Yeah. I'm going to go the Hawks because I think they go to the G. Hmm. They've got some uh, injury queries of their own, but... The big question for this is which sides, which of these sides has the more exciting future? Flip side. I'm so torn on that. Yeah. Could either of these teams make the eight still? Uh, how, how many games behind are there? You got three and two. No, I don't think so. I think I rate Gold Coast, Frio, Carlton, and at their best, the Bulldogs you are all a, better than them. You need a pretty yeah. big drop off for a couple of other yeah. teams. And this has been the big problem for Brisbane, who obviously we don't talk about this week because. They're on a bye. Yes. But for Adelaide and Brisbane to be on four wins at this point That's of the crazy. season. Especially Brisbane, like, yeah. It sucks. And mm. it's like you already have been tagged with six losses. You Even if that was six or seven, you'd be like, oh, they can make finals. Exactly. But, yeah. Like if you're in Frio's spot in mm. nine at six, four and Still one. Still be pretty confident. You'd be feeling all right. But mm. uh, yeah, the Hawks being four and seven. And with that uh, atrocious 82.8 percentage, it's a pretty long bow to draw. But I think they win this. They've been playing really, really, really well. Very and exciting, Considering yeah. that this is at the G where... The Crom and just not that good, obviously. Yeah, horrible, yeah. not won, that, won there since 2017. I think the Hawks can actually win this, so let's go Hawthorne. Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go against you again. I'm going Adelaide by eight. There's so many tips that can go either way. This yeah. this round is great. Because uh, sometimes we have a few of the same, but we haven't really had like the same. This should be some sort of sandwich bet. Whoever yeah. gets the most, most right tips. this oh, week. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'm going go Hawks by 12. Yeah, I'll go Crows by eight. 
Nice one. All right, then we go west. So that's 145 in the MCG, which is like, okay, sure, that's your Saturday. Mm-hmm. Another cool thing about missing four teams this week, no overlap. Alex will absolutely love that. He always brings up the overlap. There's a man who loves <laughs> his laps. Uh, west Coast are three and a half point favorites. First time West Coast are being favorites in a long time. The West Coast Eagles, stats boy. Crazy. Are three and a half point favorites against one of last year's finals teams. Unfortunately, that team is the St. Kilda Saints. Ooh. Eric Banner just punched a wall somewhere, you know that. Uh, 4.30 out there at Optus Stadium. Over under is 152 and a half, which feels like a slap in the face. Because I feel like if the Eagles are going to win this. They can kick a score. They, yeah. gi- they have to kick a score. Waterman. The big yeah. problem is St. Kilda tend to not. So, yeah. Uh, it's a really, really strange matchup. I love this because where are they on the ladder? Uh, it's 15th s- versus 16th. Yeah, this is. <laughs> They're both three and eight. But these are the most fun games sometimes. Just yeah. imagine that though. Like if you came <laughs> in this year, well, oh, well, you see, Jim, in round 12, we'll have a matchup between St. Kilda and West Coast. And West, West Coast to be <laughs> favored and they'd have the same record. You're like, get out of here. What Eric. if I told you, Jim? Get out of here, Eric, Eric Banner. I think it's more rare that West Coast are going in favorites after losing by 99. Pretty good. That, that is that is unbelievable. But the thing is, they've been really, really competitive, obviously, at home. At home. They're at six goal difference. Side Everybody home. knew mm. they were going to go to Adelaide over and get smashed by the Crom. Yep. And they did. So here we go. They go home. They've got a really weakened St. Kilda team. Mm-hmm. And this is the game that we keep referencing last year's game when they went west, the Saints. Uh, we mentioned on yesterday's show how I was sitting in the pub, deleting a pint, the squid's eating, <laughs> oh, what a deleting surprise. some chips. <laughs> And I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna do it! And like, they yeah. tried so hard, hard to really lose close, that game to yeah. a much worse version of the Eagles. Mm-hmm. That it's really hard not to feel pretty vaguely excited. Yeah, pretty vaguely that checks out. Vaguely excited. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know you could be both of excited. <laughs> uh, about this game and about this team, right? Like, yeah. it's kind of fun. It's kind of weird. The Saints, in terms of like kicking scores, not great. <laughs> what Sixty-two they last week against the D's. Mm. Fifty-five against the Dockers. Sixty-four against the Hawks. One hundred and three. Against the Ruse. Doesn't, doesn't count. count. Yeah. 72 <laughs> against the Power. 64 against the Dogs. Ugh. 79 against the Giants. 67 in a win against Richmond. Oh, yeah, that was ugly. Oh, God. Uh, 67 against the Bomb Rays. And they. That's just every Ross line. What team. are we doing? He here? loves like, ruining it's absolute chaos. Yeah. So this team can't kick scores. The over under is showing that 152 and a half. Let's talk about some stats, stats boy. Oh, why not? Uh, Saints have lost seven of their last eight away games, so that might also come into why uh, West Coast are favourites. But they have won their last three at Optus, but that includes when West Coast were gone really bad. They beat Freo once as well. Uh, And then, as you mentioned before, West Coast were up by 31 in this game last year. They were tracking a lot worse this time last year. They are so So much better this year. They're so much better. They're so much healthier. They've actually got some of their veterans playing pretty well. The J train is, like, dominating. Yeah. If they get up by 31 again, I think they're going to hold on instead of choke like, like last year. I mean, you think about the the setup of this West Coast forward line alone looks so much more dangerous. Mm. So between Jack Darling and the J train, uh, Jack, yeah, Jack Darling's done, but, cooked, but, but everyone still. else has gone right. But like having McGovern back there, yo, yeah, the there, experienced Gaff, guys, are just not having injured. those dudes, Duggan mm. and Kelly and Co. It's a fun team. I'm going the Eagles, but either way, before we do that, answer the big question: <laughs> Can Harley Reid? Whoa, Harley Reid, bam, a lamb. Uh, can he stiff arm every Jack on this Saints team? That's what I put in there because there's I a like lot this. of jacks. We've got a lot of jacks on so, this team. Could he just Steel, Sinclair, more? Sinclair, Hayes. Higgins. May as well. Oh, yeah, Higgins as well. Yeah. I'm trying to think we of We could throw more. Zach Jones in there as well. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Zach Jones got in there. Jack. Jack with a Z. <laughs> what? It's like a silent Z. <laughs> oh, ak, sure. Ak, ak, ak. <laughs> but either way, there's a lot of jacks, and I reckon he can do it. Yeah, you predicted uh, the other week with him stiff arm and the Christian fact Chaka. that I called the fact that he <laughs> stiff armed Oliver and Petrarca. I'm like, let's go. I think he has to do. He did one last week when uh, we put Rochelle in Rochelle, the ground. That's all. Like, and Rochelle's a big guy. Alex like, and I were literally in these exact yes, spots, yes. live reacting to that, and we l- oh. basically <laughs> fell out of our chairs. It was awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Eagles by 28. I'm going to say. Yeah. I think they just run over the top of this horrible, horrible, Ooh. horrible Ross Lyon team, and. Way louder questions start popping off about Ross Lyon. I've got a little bit of a vibe on that for Ooh, big call as okay. well. Uh, I'm going West Coast by 15. I think it'll be a lot lower scoring than some of the other games at West Coast just because Ross loves ruining footy games and making it really, really low does. scoring. So I don't think it's going to be a big margin. It will be around 80 to 60 or 70. So, yeah, about 15. All right. Saturday night footy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Geelong uh, because the Cats are – this is a uh, – I was going to say a different word, but it's a feline fight. <laughs> yeah, good, good, uh, good save there. Insert thoughts there. <laughs> uh, Forty-five and a half point favorites are the Cats against the Tigers. 
down at Tax Paste, I mean GMHBA Stadium, <laughs> 7.30 on Saturday night. Ideally, this would be a really fun game, but the way Richmond have gone, the 18th and yeah. 17th in offense and defense stats, boy, that's one of your stats. Yes. The Cats are second and 13th. Uh, the Cats, however, have some weird difficulties down there at GMHBA. Yeah. It's been a bit strange, but the over-under is 173 and a half. For all their woes, like the Tigers have had sort of games where they've not really been horrible like last week last against week they the were Bombers. Really good. They yeah. pushed the Bombers right to the edge. Yeah. They did get absolutely gabatoire smashed by the Lions <laughs> yeah. a couple of weeks ago and the Dogs before that and the Dockers before that mm. and the Demons before <laughs> yeah. that. So I feel like the under might be the vibe here just because Geelong have these weird up and down games against the whoever they're playing right at yeah. HBA. At the same time, from what we've seen against the Tigers, the cats could cover this over under themselves. Oh, possibly. I think yeah, the cat. If if you're gonna go the over, you'd you'd have to bank a cats like yep. one twenty plus score. Yep. Otherwise, it's not gonna go it's past one seventy three. Uh, it's gonna be a fascinating game though. So, give us some more stats there, stats boy. Uh, another one is Tigers. They. Uh, I remember Dimmer never liked traveling to Marvel. Well, they complained. I remember at least ten years ago about going to going to uh, Geelong. Oh, we should be playing Geelong at the G. They haven't played at GMHBA Stadium for eight years. Or eight seasons, sorry. Yeah, eight including seasons, this yeah. season. So seven years, which is unbelievable. And uh, they just really inexperienced. None of their players would have played there. So I, I don't think. Or very, very few. Well, Camden McIntosh has oh, been playing oh, since actually, the Yeah, uh, there's 1830s, a few older ones. I take that so, back. But yeah. still, very inexperienced there. That's a good question. Has Dusty played in Dusty. Geelong? I'm sure yeah. He would have. He probably would have. Games, unless he's, unless he's, there, he's like uh, Sicily. He doesn't, doesn't go to Geelong. That's it. <laughs> Sicily's like Tazzy. No Tazzy or Geelong. Oh, Dusty's like, oh, man, Geelong, too many memories, man. <laughs> Crushing at Lammies. Oh, he's oh. only played there twice. There you go. That's cool. Averages 22 disposals. There we but go. it's funny that they're 1 in 10, and it's like, all right, now you get to play in Geelong. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but they're like, <laughs> oh, we had a good week. Oh, we have to play Geelong. But Geelong. this is a 7 and 4 Geelong team that has lost four on the trot. It seems important to you know, yeah. remind everybody of that. Uh, but this is also a Richmond team that just keeps getting smashed. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like they'll put up a little bit of a fight, but then they just get completely steamrolled. So... There's another stat there you've got about the over-under there, stats boy. Uh, yeah, last five matches between these two sides have gone over the total points, but that was – Richmond have been pretty solid the last, like, five years anyway. So that's probably why it's gone over. They also had Tom Lynch the last yep. couple of times they played against each other. So, yeah, I don't think anyone in this Richmond team is going to end up putting up a big enough score. Nice right, one. Big question. Who wins a fight between <laughs> Hawk and Dusty? Tomahawk versus Dusty. I don't think Tomahawk has that dog in him. Dusty, Dusty does. Dusty's but definitely Tomahawk got the dog in is him. like double the size of everyone That's on that That's why I like the combination. <laughs> I'm like, two dudes are about to be over like 300 plus games, etc. Two veterans, two champions of the game. The other yeah. thing, it's like those when UFC first started, how they had the biggest yeah, guy big versus the smallest guy. Because, like, yeah, Tomahawk is way bigger than He's Dusty. He's like, come here, you! <laughs> and Dusty's like, you can't catch me! Or Dusty bring out his chopsticks that he uh, Dusty got in trouble like, for a while. Dusty absolutely choke him out. I want <laughs> Nothing to do with Dusty. Uh, I'm going Geelong by 36 in this game. Ooh, I think okay. it should be. Or it should, should have been a bit of a I thought it was going to be more of a smashing. I think they sort of just let him into it late. Mm. Uh, I wanted to go higher, but then I'm like, Geelong have not been wildly convincing. Nah. So four straight losses. They get right, though, in this one. Uh, what about you, Stats Boy? Yeah, I'm going Richmond to cover the line, but by 0.5, apparently. Uh, Geelong <laughs> by 45. I'm going, but just, I think that's still a pretty big uh, smashing. But yeah, it's not going to be like your 60 plus, which a lot of people probably think it is. Nice. Right, Sunday Arvo footy, <laughs> one o'clock at TIO Oval. What is it, Traeger Park? Well, I wrote in here, I Googled it. It's actually TIO Oval 2. What, 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 <laughs> what Melbourne, Melbourne, I knew you were like, Melbourne, what, they, they're not allowed to play an Oval 1 in, in Alice Springs? Anyway, that Alice Springs is actually got the nice one, that but it's like, ah, it's Melbourne and Freya, they can play yeah. the crap one. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I don't know, I just, I don't even know if there is an Oval 1 anymore, but Traeger if you Park. look it up, it says 2. I'm like, so we, we've got the Demons and the Dockers playing in Alice Interesting matchup. I think so. We've seen uh, Melbourne play in Alice obviously a little bit. Yeah. And we've had like a sideways rain game, basically, like monsoon. Really sort hot of games. Gear, yeah. Super hot stuff. Uh, 1 p.m. Sunday game feels weird. I'm like, I feel like these tend to be night games as well. So. Uh, yeah. There's been a few yeah. Saturday night ones, hasn't there? Yeah. Over under is 150 and a half because Melbourne, the look, they've there? actually cranked up the offense here and there. As I mentioned the other day, they ripped off 100 against, uh, yep. was it the Saints or whatever last week? And Frio are very up and down when it comes to offense. I don't know. It's a very strange matchup. The Demons are 11.5 point favorites, and that feels right after the Demons' last few weeks. But I feel like Frio are sort of 
poised to have a little bit of a bounce back. Ooh. No, just think Possible, but they've been tracking pretty well. The yeah. over-under, though, just sort of stinks. 150.5. It's like, I that think is it's because so... it's always, like, muggy there. I'm, yeah. I'll have a look at the weather for you. I'm going to go meteorologist mode here. 19. So it's not even that hot. Usually, Perfect weather it's for perfect. footy. Yeah, Let's so go. I don't think that... I think that over-under, even though... Uh, two really good defenses should go over that. All right, give us some stats, stats boy. Uh, all right, Melbourne at four and five all time in Alice Springs. I thought they would have played a few more games there, but pretty bad record considering it's their second home ground. Uh, and then Frio, they've covered the line in seven of their last eight away games, and the away team has won the last three meetings between these two. So yeah, Frio might help your yeah your call. I like that. Um, the second and third best defenses. Yeah, so that's why that's I think it's one hundred and fifty point five because Frio. Pierce has been killing it. Luke yeah. Ryan's been Ryan's killing been it. Smashing it. Their defense is awesome. And then you got uh, May, who's awesome down there for for the uh, damage. It's gonna be May. Uh, <laughs> seven of the last nine Frio games have gone under. That yeah, tra- that tracks as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go Frio by eight. I think Ooh. once you get Melbourne away from the G or something, I just don't trust them at all. Uh, just I think they are seven and four. Frio are six four and one. The D's they beat the Saints, but they lost to the Eagles last or two or two weeks ago. Yep. Out West. I don't like them on the road. They lost that weird game to Carlton where they came flying back. Truck nearly got them the win. They beat Geelong. They smoked Richmond, but that's at the G. They lost to Brisbane at home. They're having a very strange year, even though they're being vague, vaguely successful. So I'm going to go Freo. I yeah, kind of okay. like them a little bit more. That's right, so yeah. eight points. Let's nice. go. The Dockers. Heave ho. <laughs> way to go. Get the worst Jim, song. <laughs> get Jim a win and away we go. <laughs> All right, stats boy. Uh, I'm going against you again. Melbourne by six. We're going against each other. Hate is going to hate. I, I like this. How many have we got? It's probably out of the at least five. Out of the so seven far. games, really going to have five different. Yeah, that's good. I, I'm happy to do that sandwich. But uh, Melbourne by 16. Uh, Freo, I'm pretty sure I've only played there once or twice ever. I don't know, man. Melbourne Fre- are four Bailey and five. Bailey Fritch's hair is getting, getting his It'll eyes. It'll get his way. It it's might be a bit too sweaty. slippery and moist. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think they're tracking a little greasy bit Greasy conditions there in Alice. I don't know. But Melbourne by 16. Not going to be too greasy, I don't think. All right. Then finally, the final game right. of round 12, because we only have the seven. Gold Coast. My beloved Gold Coast Suns against my beloved Essendon Bombers. Who do I pick? <laughs> How many beloveds do you have? A house divided. What do we do, Stats Boy? Because uh, Gold Coast at home are like my favorite team in the AFL. Gold Coast uh, and Darwin. Non-Carlton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Essendon are just the best team in the AFL right now. And I love everything they do. They cannot fail. They will not lose again this year. Uh, so I have to still go with my beloved bomb rays, obviously. But the this is 4 p.m. Sunday. Gold Coast, five and a half point favorites against the Bombers. Yep. The best team in the AFL. Uh, 100. <laughs> Swans, <laughs> you every say. Swans fan is just punching. Jim, give us credit. I'm like, never. I think every Essendon fan is probably going, why is he saying that? He's going to jinx us. Why? It's not a jinx. They're the best team in the yeah, AFL, yeah, starts yeah, for. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> 153 and a half is this over under, which is a fascinating one, right? Mm. Because you've got Gold Coast that has these really crazy high scoring games where they deleted Geelong. Yeah. Put up 164 or whatever it was on them. Essendon play a pretty wide open style. They've had a pretty handy sort of run. Obviously, they are dominating. They are awesome. They're eight two and one. What does this do? Does it go over or under? What do you think? Because like even uh, I think back to that like Ruse game. I go over. Yeah, it was like that was like one one hundred six to sixty six. That was in Darwin, but yeah, it still no, went Ruse Ruse bombers. Oh, sorry, Ruse bombers. I thought you said Ruse. And so the bombers yeah. have like yeah, you're right. Yeah, like not blown the doors off teams. I think if you look through their last six weeks or whatever, 96 mm. against the Dogs, 78 against the Crom, mm-hmm. 85, 85, obviously Anzac Day, 77 against the Eagles, 82 against GWS, 106 against North yeah. Melbourne, AKA the East Court, Keeler really. under 14's mixed netball group. <laughs> and uh, only 86 against the Tigers. So I don't, I think I'm still going over. Just like both the these there. forward lines are in form. I think you've got Ben King, he's crushing it. You've got Langford, Stringer, and then you've got all the mids that have been kicking goals for the Suns. Yeah, I'm, I've been going over. 153 seems just like 10 points too low. I reckon. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. weirdly 153. Yeah. Like, I, didn't, I looked at the weather. It's not raining or anything. Even if the I Bombers sort of get to that, sort of as I just rattled off, right? Like yeah. 82, 86 or whatever. It's going to go it's well go over. over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, give us some stats, stats, man. All right. Uh, Gold Coast 6-1 and one at home this year. That includes uh, the Darwin games. Also won their last 10 as home favorite. So they're going in as a home favorite again. And then Bombers, they are undefeated in their last eight meetings against Gold Coast. That includes a draw. So mm-hmm. that was a weird draw. I can't even really remember that draw. But yeah, they have a really, really strong record against Gold Coast, especially up, up in uh, up in the Gold Coast as well. Nice one. Mm. Uh, the big question for this one, 
We didn't actually ask the last big question for the last game. Will it be raining? You asked uh, that, I think. Yeah. But I basically got to the weather. Yeah. I just wanted to, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to like, whenever they play in Alice, I'm like, what's the weather? What's the weather? <laughs> what's the weather? Is the weather good? Play, you know, weather. Weather. <laughs> it's weather game. It's weather footy. Every yeah. time they play in Alice, the weather has something does, weird going something on. crazy, yeah. Anyway, uh, the big question for this one, should this match decide if the Suns permanently just move to Darwin? Yeah, my theory on that is if they lose... Then move to Darwin. Move to Darwin. Because you don't lose. lose. That's you win, all right. You can stay, stay there. Stay north. <laughs> yeah. Just don't play any, any, any games. Or just look at the weather from both places and then decide. Yeah, they can't play any <laughs> games like lower than like, there's got to be some sort of like uh, latitude or something. <laughs> the it's equator. Like, yeah. It's very clearly like where they start sucking. Like, <laughs> we should like, look oh, into we that. We can't actually. go to Gosford. <laughs> I might look into that. <laughs> I mean, we're not playing any games in like, I don't know, Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> right. yeah. Um, but I like this idea a lot because, you know, I'm really firmly on the Suns train Darwin if they're playing Suns. up north. Mm. But... How do I choose in this game? Well, the Bombers, as I've already said, they're not going to lose again the rest of this How year. Are the Bombers? Bombers by six. Wow. Let's go. They do have a really good record up there, but I'm going Gold Coast by 12. We're going against each other again. Gold Coast by 12. Obviously, six and one at home. I think they're going to get the job done. Nice one. That's all the previews. Uh, we are going to have all the teams at the end of this show as well as we rattle. We'll just basically punch through every single uh, matchup with all the teams. Yep. Big calls for round 12, 12, 12, 12. Uh, first one is Jezza kicks eight. Oh. We're both going the same game here as well. Oh, are oh, we? Yeah. Nice one. All right, other big call. Ross Lyon should be fired after the Saints get absolutely smashed by the Eagles. Ooh. He's not going to. No, probably because of money reasons as well. But, yeah. but he should. He should. Okay. Fair enough. Because if they get... They shouldn't... Yeah. If they get smashed they by West They probably shouldn't Coast, even lose, really. They shouldn't but, lose. But they, they will. They should be substantially <laughs> yeah. better. Yeah. But they're not at the moment. No. It's very weird and <laughs> bad. Because you're bad, St. Kilda. Stop being bad. Bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Banner again, just like, oh, Eric geez. Banner's not happy. Yeah, yeah. So angry. Uh, Jez is going to kick eight. Jez is going to kick eight. I think this, wow. he's like had some weird weather? couple of weeks. And he's also missed a lot of sitters. He has. It's he has. Been Which weird, is very right? rare for him. He's usually a dead eye. Anyway, your big call of the week, Stats Boy. Yeah, Geelong focus again. I'm going Grind Myers. Uh, Messi. Weird Gr- way of or pronouncing Grinal Myers, sorry. Grinal Messi. Grinal Messi, Grinal Myers. Uh, we'll have 25 plus disposals and six plus goal assists versus Richmond. He's uh career high in goal assists is five. He's got the most ever goal assists uh, last season, which was 41. Uh, I think he's going to get his, yeah, he's, he's career high. I had a look at uh, who has had the most ever goal assists in a game. It was Stevie J. Mm-hmm. He had 10. I don't think he can get 10. That's, that's a bit of a jump. But six, I think is pretty doable and 25 plus disposals. I like this. Because it's going to be in their forward half a lot. He plays as that like fifth on bowler, set up a lot of goals. Yeah. Good one. Nice. Grian, Chris Paul, Myers. Chris Paul. Nice. Yeah, he's the assist king. What are we keeping an eye on in round 12? This is going <laughs> to suck. I can't believe Carlton has to play the first game of the week where With they're like, the we're rule. judging the rules. Yeah, yeah. And Carlton's like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> we were going to lose this game anyway, but now it's going to be wildly more frustrating. If something bad happens tonight, they might actually change it from tonight to the next game. Like, that wouldn't even surprise me. You, this week, like the, it is awesome. So as we broke down on yesterday's show, the winners and losers for this week are very clearly the four teams not playing. Yes. Because they don't get impacted by it. They also probably don't get accustomed to it, but at the same time, you uh, can watch it and probably normally. figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the teams that are playing on Saturday are so much more, like, I don't know, benefited by the simple fact that they're playing later in the weekend mm. because Friday, Thursday and Friday's games are just going to be like, the umpires go, when do I blow the whistle? <laughs> yeah. Do I blow it? Oh, they said to blow it. Up. And it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to blow it earlier. It's like, he didn't. Have, what are you doing? He's yeah. over there. <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> they're just going to make the brain fart. The farts. ball's over there. Yeah. It's like, it's up the other end now, you moron. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, it's so hard to be an umpire. Is it? Is it that hard? Anyway, point being, <laughs> yes. I think we're obviously, everybody's going to be keeping an eye on the holding the ball calls. Mm-hmm. As we broke down on yesterday's show as well, I think it's simply more frustrating the incorrect improper disposal yeah. sort of rules that lead into holding the I'm hoping balls. that it sort of mixes in. I think I said that yesterday. That might come just into it hopefully better. just some more common sense. Yeah. Uh, what else are we keeping an eye on? If Richmond's effort last week was a one-off or not. Yeah. That is a really good call because as I sort of listed off, right? Like Sydney, smashed, that was a smashed, one-off. <laughs> smashed, smashed, yeah. smashed. Oh, they're not bad. Mm. Are they going to get smashed again? Mm. Or I, I do love that there's also the about face. I'm like, Dustin Martin's cooked. Oh, no, Dusty's back. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. One game. One game. One one game. game if he plays time. well this week, all right, might be back. Uh, Trelaw against his old side. I love this. So one a of lot my, of beef there, yeah. One of the super coach uh, picks that I had for this week for the uh, the little tab special was like Trelaw 30 plus. It feels like Ooh. almost a lock because mm. he has been shredding yeah, averaging it. like 34 or something. Completely under the radar. Mm. I don't know why. 
Uh, it's probably his role. It's not like this super glamorous role. He's not, he's not as super damaging, glamorous but he gets a lot of it. Yeah. But I think against his old side, with a bunch of those older, headier dudes out, he's mm. going to revel in trying yep. to sh- tear him to shreds. 40, maybe. <laughs> which would be kind of fun. And keep an eye on everything Clarko. <laughs> I want this weekend. Here we go. Just an eagle eye on Clarko. Oh, Clarko can we, can we just get like a, one of those you know, door cams just out That's the front of his house? That's an invasion of privacy. Come on. Just some sort of drone out his window, just watching him punch a wall every time they yeah. say something. Yeah. Just he'd be blowing his lid every time they – because we know that he hates the umpire stuff as well. Yeah. And now he's like abusing umpires. Just imagine what he does at home when he's week off. Yeah, there's just a wall in one of his rooms. That's the punching wall. Yeah, the punching wall. <laughs> the I heard Libba used to have a punching wall. I love a yeah. good punching wall. That'd be awesome. All right, should we go through some Super Coach tips, vibes, thoughts? Why not? Why or not? should we just go to the teams right now and come back with Super Coach right at the end? Uh, I reckon Super Coach right at the end, actually. All right. <laughs> Let's do some teams ins and outs right now. All right, before we finish up with Super Coach, let's do some teams ins and outs here. Stats Boy, they've just released Collingwood Dogs on Friday night footy. <laughs> Markov, Bytel, the forgotten man, Ash Johnson, yeah. Jeremy Howe. That's a, that's a nice in the list. Finley McRae as well. In for the Pies. Out goes Edward Allen's Pendles. Pendles. Maya Check, Joe Richards, breaking Super Coach. Oh, Hearts no, that's guttering. Mason Cox as well. Uh, he's broken off into myriad Voltron pieces, I reckon. Yeah, he's got point. surgery. Uh, in for the dogs, James O'Donnell, Simon O'Donnell, son. <laughs> Rory Lobb, who had to apologise again for just being, I don't know, weird. a Rory knob. Yeah, but anyway, weird. Lachlan McNeil as well. In for Anthony Scott, Norton, who's obviously injured, and uh, Ed Richards. Richards and Norton are big outs. Big yeah. outs for the dogs. Mm. Still why I kind of like the pies a little bit there. Hawks, one change. Reeves in for Lloyd Meek. Big downgrade, I Tough think. Tough one. But- yeah, because Tony has been great. Yeah. He's been fantastic. No changes for the Crows. Eagles bring in Harry Edwards, Matt Flynn, Andrew Gaff, and Jack Petrucelli, which is pretty awesome. Love that for the Eagles. Mm. Out go Hunt, Rotham, Dewar, and Williams for the Sainters. Member Tim Membry. <laughs> member. I member. <laughs> Hunter Clark and Dan Butler. Pretty big ins. Yeah, that's pretty good. Dan yeah, Butler's been average, but... If he uh, has a bit of a spark. Echo Stocker, Cooper Shaman, and Lance Collar. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cats bring back Gary Rohan, Mark <laughs> O'Connor. Uh, in for Mark Blixavs and Jai Clark, both suspended. Solid. I yeah, Gary Rohan's a, a big in. He always fires up at the uh, at the category. Tigers, Ryan Mansell, not Reese. Jack Graham, <laughs> Caleb really? Smith. Out goes Shy Bolton, Dan Presti, the meatball, and Steely Green. One of the great names. That's a shame. Bolden uh, and Presti are out. Oh. Caleb Smith makes his debut. That's kind of nice. nice. For the D's on Sunday, extended benches, don't forget. Jack Billings, Bailey Laurie, Daniel Turner, and Ben Brown come in for – we're missing Rue for the D's. Ooh. That sucks. Mm. Uh, Frio, Michael Friedrich, Neil Erasmus, Sam Sturt. Sturt and Frederick, I like that. They, they, they'll kick a few more goals because they're in. And then finally, Suns, Dons. Ah, oh, how am I going to pick this guy, he says. <laughs> uh, stupid Sexy Flanders is back. Oh, Got over the illness. Thank God for Supercoach. We'll talk about illness again in a second. Rory Atkins, Sam Day, Will Graham for the extended bench. Out goes Jake Rogers. Ah, a snake. Another just kicking the guts for Supercoaches. I'm I know, just saying. This is not good. Ben Long plays his 100th game as well. Uh, for the Dons, Harrison Jones, Nick Bryan, Archie Roberts, Jai Menzi on the extended bench. Out goes Nate Caddy with an illness after making his debut last week. Yes. Remember, the bomb race. They had an illness sweep through the team this mm. week. They don't play until Sunday. They're going up to the Gold Coast. The warmth will just burn it out of them, surely. That's how it works. I'm no yeah, medical doctor. Yeah, it could doctor. be some laid out, so we have to watch that one. I could have given them the illness, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, in Adam Essendon. I was, I was pretty sick over the weekend. How many so. of them were you tongue kissing? <laughs> yeah, a few. Yeah. It was clearly a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Because it spread like wildfire. <laughs> what else were you doing? <laughs> nothing, nothing. All right. Uh, that's the teams. Super coach tips, thoughts, vibes, 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 vibes. Because it's a very big vibes week. We are best 18 mm-hmm. because it is the buyers, obviously. Uh, I'm trying Frasier, to count if I actually have 18. This is a struggle. Do you have 18? Uh, I need to make some trades. Oh, uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> I've already made my trades. I brought in Frazier for Darcy Jones. Yep. Upgraded Rosie to Butters because I want no bar of Rosie with that hammy. Fair. Uh, and Jordan Sweet's gone out to basically make that happen. So, I, what is it, Cohen, Liv- Cohen Livingston finally makes his debut on my bench. <laughs> he's owned by, what was it, 23% of yeah, Super Yeah, 23% coaches now. and he's not even going to play. That's, that's Amazing. Story. So, peace out, Jordan Sweet. But because Soldo was obviously named Sweet, was admitted for the Thursday night footy game. So, yep. pack her up. VC vibes, Butters, Walsh in that Thursday night game, sure. Yep. Outside of that, Dacos and Bont are the obvious ones. Dacos, I think, with so many players out, it's like even like Pendles. Pendles gets around 20 touches. Yep. He, there's another five or ten towards Dacos, so I'd go Dacos. In terms of Supercoach, I actually love that for Lockie Sullivan as well. 
if you brought him in Ooh. as one oh, of yeah. your rookies, we'll get more midfield minutes. you should get way more midfield minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the captaincy spot for me, it's probably just going to be hoping that my VC rolls pretty nicely because then you've got Gorn, Gorn against go Frio. Well. Yeah. Well, he dominated Marshall, who, exactly. I, who I thought was the second best ruck. So uh, you got to go Gorn. Uh, if you've got Marshall, I'd probably throw him against West Coast as well because Marshall's yep. been absolutely crushing it. Uh, outside of that, Zerrit against the Suns, we did see, I don't know, like despite Carlton having a million touches last week, Walsh didn't score that highly, but he also butchered it with the ball a bit. So yep. maybe Zerrit, keep him in your back pocket. Sarong maybe Sarong, as well. Yeah, yeah he um, always goes well. Yep. If you're looking at the week. projections, I think Sarong's at 124, which is the same as Butters. So it's like mm. shrug emoji apparently yeah. at that <laughs> yeah. point. Uh, but Gornicus, Maximus Aurelius Gornicus, his full name is at 130. So 130. I'm probably just going to go with Gorn. Uh, last week, me, I had, yeah, I did, did the coin flip basically between Dacos and Sarong as the VC. Ended up on Sarong. Dacos rips off 130. I would have taken that. At least you got, no, I had, I had Buddy Zorko. Lucky I, I, I he got that. 66. And so then I, was, I got the uh, I awesome Gornicus one. So. Nice. All right, but that'll do it for AFL Today for today. We'll be back on Sunday for AFL Today to wrap up an amazingly, awesomely set up round 12. As evidenced by our tipsy stats, boy, five different in seven Very games. Very different, yeah. Bad. It's going to be hard. Thank you for jumping on those stats, boy. Yeah, At least you. you showed up to work, unlike Alex. Always. Thank you. <laughs> Cop that. <laughs> He's sitting there at home going, but I already did 77 shows. I'm <laughs> You're like, all right, buddy, settle down. Just don't punch that wall again. Uh, but anyway, Kaka, yeah. If you're going to go punch a wall, just remember to also smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. That's what we do. That's right. You can see it on YouTube, Facey, Instagram, TikTok, X. On Facey, it is the Sports Today Show. Go check it out. You can also check out the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia. It didn't have a show today. It was weird. But there's no yeah. game. So... Back on deck for Friday. That'd be fun. NBA, uh, in the NBA show and NFL show as well as hold all tickets for all your GGs. Subscribe, subscribe, star, and like. Subscribe. That was a good one. <laughs> all of those shows across your podcast apps as well. Uh, get around them all like Dale Lewis trying to give a talk at my high school in the late 90s. That and is everyone, a weird reference. And everyone going, all right, Dale Lewis. <laughs> Are Do you have you any good? footage of that? Are you good? And he's like, oh, I don't know, man, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, I loved him. It was great. Good on you, Dale Lewis. Proud Ballarat, man. Get him on the and, show. That's it. We'll catch you later this week. And to wrap up round 12 for you for AFL today, in between then, have a great weekend of footy. Because remember, look after yourselves and footy's back.